Yes, certainly. I think that uh, Washington is watching this drama very closely, in part because it's just fascinating, but in part because it's a kind of continuing demonstration of uh, internal turmoil in the UK and weakness among the UK government, which is, has an impact on any trade deal that the US might want to negotiate with uh, Britain after a Brexit would happen. I think one thing that's imp very important to understand is that that trade deal will be, uh, as trade deals always are, a hard-nosed trade deal, which is done uh, from the U.S. side in their interests. And everything that happens here indicates to the U.S. and the Trump administration particularly that the U.K. is weak and will be a weaker negotiating partner in that trade deal. Do you think it's important for people to understand that what's going on here is all about the short term? and that there's a much bigger challenge ahead for the UK when it comes to negotiating trade agreements, not just with the US, but elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's a sort of fundamental aspect that tends to get lost in the sort of daily fascinating drama that happens in this building behind us. What they're negotiating in there is the, is the terms of October 31st, whether they leave with a deal or no deal. But what we know with great certainty is that no matter what happens on October 31st, Brexit is not over. Brexit is probably just beginning on October 31st. The, the terms, especially if there is a no deal, the terms of the UK's trade arrangements with its biggest trading partner, the European Union, will need to be determined after October 31st. And that means that uh, none of the uncertainty will end. In, in a certain way, the process won't end. And that will have a huge impact on the way that other countries, not, a, not even beyond the EU, see the UK and how they're willing to negotiate their trade deals. Yesterday, Boris Johnson talked about legislators here seeking to chop the legs out from the UK's negotiating position vis-a-vis -vis Brussels by trying to block no deal. He wants to have that as a credible threat in order to try and force the EU to compromise on areas where the British government, as it's currently constituted, would like to see that compromise. And I just wonder, given the possibility then of no deal, do people need to understand what that means for those future negotiations on trade? I think so. I mean, I, uh, one gets the sense, I go to Brussels a fair amount, and one gets the sense there that they are feeling, as, the, as this negotiation proceeds, that uh, somewhat betrayed, um, a, a word that's usually used over here, by the British government's ever-changing negotiating stance and by the British government's approach to these negotiations, which hasn't been one of, okay, let's try to work out uh, a, uh, a, an amicable exit. From their perspective, an, agree, uh, an agreement was agreed last year with Theresa May, uh, or several months ago with Theresa May, uh, and now they want to come back and change it, and they're threatening the EU well, with those changes. And I think that their, their view is, well, if this is the way that the UK wants to, wants to deal with us, we, we're used to that, we know how to do that with other countries, and we can do it, but it means that we're not going to be dealing with them on the, U, on the terms that we have dealt with them in the past as a sort of friendly nation that we trust. We're going to have to enter a hard-nosed negotiation after October 31st for a difficult trade deal. They'll still be willing to do that, but I think that they'll find that the negotiating terms are much harder, that they're, that they're very focused on the letter of what it says, and that there's not much trust in the negotiations. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.